All right, so let's talk about this problem on the final exam. Problem number four. If it's a 2D problem, um, then uh, you know what's it going to be like? It, it, it's I, I I don't think I can uh, surprise you too much with a problem like this. Um, it's probably going to either be a you know a simply supported beam like this or a cantilever beam. Uh, but just just know that you know this has no moment at A, right? Uh, whereas a cantilever beam does have right, does have a moment right here at the wall. Um, but anyway, you're going to have to do statics to find either this MA and AY or this AY and BY or whatever. You're going to have to do statics to start out to solve for uh, some of the forces. Uh, then it's time for the shear and moment diagram. For the shear diagram, you just look at the forces, look at the loads, the forces, and, and pretend like those are kind of pushing you up and down. <laughs> it, um, um, concentrated forces immediately push you up or down by that magnitude, right? This goes up by 40. This goes down by 60, so I'm left at, at negative 20. This goes up by 20. You you need to end at zero. Um, and distributed loads. Make sure you can uh, handle distributed loads, um, triangular distributed loads, um, uniform distributed loads, distributed loads... Let's talk about this. A uniform distributed load, right, pushes you down linearly, right? A triangular distributed load pushes you down either curved like this or curved like this. Just think about how, how hard is it pushing you down? Is it pushing me down like this? It's pushing me down hard to begin with right here, right? So I'd kind of go down like that, uh, and, th and then it starts pushing me down smaller right there. Okay, so the shear diagram, I don't think the shear diagram is too uh, difficult. It's the moment diagram. It sometimes can be tricky. So the moment diagram, I'm looking for three things. I'm looking for concentrated moments that immediately push me up and down. Remember, clockwise pushes me up. That's how I remember it. I don't know why. Clockwise pushes me up. You can think counterclockwise pushes me down, right? Uh, but um, concentrated moments push me straight up and straight down. Push the moment diagram straight up and straight down. Uh, but then the other thing is areas under the shear, right? Area under the shear pushes me up or down by that area. So calculate the area and go plot the next point um, and then come back and decide, do I go linear or with curvature? Um, and I think V is a slope of M. To think about this curvature, I think V is a slope of M. So the slope of this is going to be whatever value that is. That value, that value, that value, that value. Um, a uniform shear it leads to a linear moment, right? If this was like that, it would lead to a um, V is a slope, right? Start with a slope of 40, then have a slope of 38, 39, 30, 20, 15, 5, 0, you know? So think about that when you're doing the curvature, curvature right there. Um, in general, distributed loads that are pushing down right here lead to a this sort of curvature, this concave down curvature of the moment diagram. We don't have very many, but if you ever have a distributed load that was on the bottom pushing up, um, that would lead to a curvature like this concave up right there. Um, so anyway, for the moment diagram, I'm looking for Three things. Concentrated moments that push me straight up, straight down. Um, area under the shear pushes me up and down over the area. And um, V is the slope of M to find the curvature. All right. The shear stress is VQ over IT. Right? Shear stress is VQ over IT. So what is the V at the point that you're looking at? Don't don't just give me some, some V that you had calculated. I'm going to tell you where to cut it. So look back at the diagram. I, I drew, uh, I made this ugly, right? But look, this, this is the location. This is where I want the shear. Use the correct V right there. Use 40 right there because this was, I wanted it at this cut. Q, it's going to be the hard part maybe. Y bar prime A prime. A prime is the area away from the point that you're interested in. Y bar prime is the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of A prime. 
from the neutral axis to the centroid of A prime. Then one other thing I'll, I'll uh, caution you on, be careful. I think we had this on our test this semester. If I give you that point, then I would break this into two uh, rectangles and find the Y bar prime A prime of that blue rectangle, find the Y bar prime A prime of the pink rectangle and add them together to get the, the Q. Otherwise, you would need to find the centroid of this T, which is doable. We've done that in statics. You could find the centroid of a T, uh, but I would just break it up into and just sum the Y bar prime A prime, Y bar prime A prime. If you've got an A prime that is really kind of two shapes, that might be harder to find the centroid of. Okay, um, I, make sure you can calculate I for I beams. Uh, I probably won't give you something that's not symmetric. I don't worry about finding the centroid, um, but do worry about calculating the I. And then the thickness is the thickness, you know, at that point that you're interested in. In this case, it was 10 because it was below that flange. My over I. I think we've kind of covered it. The M, not the M, you know, at the wall or here or here or here. Look at where I'm asking you to cut it and find the M right there. The M right there would be 20. All right, 20 units matter. So I'm, so I'm going to multiply both of these by 1,000 out here. Uh, the Y value is not Y prime, Y bar prime. The Y, don't overthink this one, is just the distance to the point. From the neutral axis to the point you're interested in divided by I. I'm going to denote um, compression or tension just by visualizing a positive moment is like a smiley face and I'm looking at the top, right? Point A is on the top half. So a smiley face on the top half is going to be compression. If it was a smiley face and I was looking at the bottom half, it'd be tension. If it was a negative frown and the top half would be tension, the negative frown, right? And the bottom half would be compression. Those are the only four you know, scenarios, um, or you can keep track of your positives and negatives very carefully. Negative from the equation, a positive moment and a positive y value would lead to compression. All right, so I think that covers it. Anything that you might, um, my one uh, caution for you, go back and look at all the shear and moment diagrams because I'm probably going to give you a, a, a lot more difficult shear and moment diagram than this this one right here. All right.